Okay, this is problem 5.49. A uniform rigid bar of length L and mass M is supported on two springs and is subjected to a force Ft, F0 sine omega T, as shown in this figure over here. Alright. Uh, derive the equations of motion of the bar for small displacements. And then next, discuss the nature of coupling in the system. Okay. So, first of all, we are going to derive the equation of motions using only FBD. Okay, there's two ways of deriving your equation of motions. Whether you use FBD only, and then find the summation of forces and also summation of moments. Or, using Lagrange. Uh, Lagr uh, Lagrange equation. So uh, we're gonna do both for this uh, for this question. So I'm gonna show you both. So the first one uh, will do the summation of forces and so also summation of moment only from FBD. So let's take a look at this figure over here. All right. So uh, as given in the figure itself, okay, uh, the length is given from left to the right, right? Uh, I mean from the left side to the center is L over two. Okay, so L over 2 from the left side to the center, from K2 to the, to the center. And then from K2 to Ft is given 5L over 6. Since we are going to do moment, right, right, we are going to, uh, to do summation of moment uh, based from the pivot point. Okay, we assume that this center over here is a pivot point. All right, in some way it is a center. So... I'm going to find the distance from F or from 2K to the center. So 5L over 6 minus L over 2, you'll get the remaining length, which is L over 3. Next, uh, I want to find this distance over here, which is actually, uh, it's not usable at all. Okay, uh, you don't, you're not going to use it at all, but I'm just going to show you guys how I find L over 6. So L minus 5L over 6, you'll get L over L over 6. Okay, done that. Okay, we've already done the dimensions, the lengths uh, of K and 2K to the center. So, given here that uh, this rigid bar is supported by K and also 2K, alright? So, since we are going to do FBD, all right, we are going to detach the springs or the damper if there is one. Okay, for this question, there are no dampers. There are only springs. So we are going to detach the damper. Sorry, we are going to detach the uh, springs from the body. All right, see how I detach it? Okay, remember, if you are going to the FBD, always separate damper springs from the body. So, and. Uh, the rigid bar is simply spotted on two springs. Okay. Then there are force acting right on top of the second spring. The spring 2K, right? Right on top of 2K, there is forces. Uh, there is force Ft, F0 sin omega T acting downwards towards 2K. Alright. So this whole system will consist of two motion. Alright. Uh, so basically this is a... Uh, two degree of freedom, all right? You have translational, which is everything basically going downwards. So that's why uh, I put over here, over here, X going downwards. So I define straight away that downwards is positive, okay? Next, since there is, uh, there is force over here, the force is only acting on the right side of the rigid bar, okay, on the right side of the, towards the center, from the center, right side. So I assume that this bar will eventually, everything will go down, all right? It will be presses downwards, but then only one side got force acting downwards, so it will be slightly like this, all right? I hope you guys can imagine this, okay? So that's why I define that everything moves. This bar will also move in rotational, uh, which is clockwise direction. Right, so I define that clockwise direction is positive for this question. Okay, after I define all that, okay, remember, first of all, FBD, separate the springs and dampers, 
and then define the which direction for translational or which direction for rotational is positive either downwards upwards rotation uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise okay uh, next I'm gonna define the arrows the arrow head for the case okay so for K since the bar we know that everything uh, in translational everything moves downwards now so basically K and 2K will be compressed right will be compressed so the force uh, action reaction forces okay it must uh, on the body must be opposite if the arrow the force acting on on k is going downwards so the force or uh, action reaction force of k on the body will be opposite upwards same goes here upwards all right next why do we do this because we want to find the relative displacement for the springs okay we know the force for the springs is kx but the x is actually not x now we want to find the relative displacement based on this question so now looking at the arrow heads on the case okay for k the arrow since k is going downwards that's why we put the arrow uh, going downwards okay since downwards is positive we define downwards is positive so over here we put it for this arrow it is positive x same goes for this arrow this is positive x all right next from the center to the springs I mean from the center to the arrow hits okay from the center to the arrow hits all right this will be clockwise right from the center to the arrow hit this will be clockwise since we define clockwise is positive so this will be positive displacement okay which this it's not what we want we don't want uh, another x okay this is for rotational so x equals to r theta right so the radius the distance from spring 2k to the center is l over 3 so r theta is l over 3 theta positive okay because we default from the center to the to the arrow head is clockwise clockwise is positive so positive l over 3 theta next so for k from the center to the arrow head right it is anti-clockwise right it is anti-clockwise so anti-clockwise is opposite from what we define as positive clockwise is positive so this will be negative so x equals to r theta so you get l over 2 theta okay the negative l over 2 theta x equals to r theta why the r is l over 2 because the distance from k to the center is l over l over 2 all right now since we've already take out the relative displacements now we can know what is their forces so the force for k now is the relative displacement for k is x the one in blue at with the one in red so x minus l over 2 theta all right so that's your force for the spring for this first spring next find the force for the second spring the spring is 2k x plus l over 3 x plus l over 3 theta this will be a force for the second spring now we've already taken out the forces of the springs okay only then we can do the summation of forces and summation of moment remember summation of forces and summation of moment only use the one at the body all right we don't need this anymore you know we don't need the springs we just focus on the body only 
So take, take this out from the free body diagram. I get this, right? The same thing. I just take it out. All right. I just zoom in at that part of the body only. So only then we can do the free body diagrams. All right. Before that, uh, if you guys confuse, how am I going to determine whether it is going towards the uh, arrow heads or not? If the arrow heads on the spring is going downwards like this, all right. This is just an example, huh? If it's going downwards like this, since it is compressed, so from the center to the arrow head, uh, to the same direction as the arrow heads, showing downwards. If the arrow heads on the spring is showing upwards, all right. So you cannot do this because it is the opposite direction. So you have to do from the center to the arrow head. Also going to the same direction upwards. Okay. From the center to the arrow head. Showing or going to the same direction. So this one over here. For, this is just an example. yeah. So for this one. Uh, this is moving anti-clockwise right we define clockwise is positive so this one here will not be like this anymore this will be negative so negative x equals to r theta negative l over 3 theta not positive okay this is just a, this is just an example okay if the arrow head on the spring is going upwards that's the only difference all right okay so if you guys are wondering when is the spring is uh, when is the arrow head on the spring is going upwards when the question states that for this question for example the rigid bar is is being pushed upwards with a certain force okay so it means that the springs are not compressed the springs now are stretched uh, like that all right so that just uh, I just wanted you guys to understand how to do this free body diagram all right so okay i'm done with the example so continue so once you've done the free body diagram take the body part only the body part so i get this all right and then first of all i do the summation of forces f equals to ma right uh, so that's why m x double dot x double dot is acceleration uh, it is uh, a so f equals to ma so summation of forces equals to mx double dot equals to take a look at the body so what's the body now the body is the one with the uh, blue colored line okay that's the original rigid body so we define going downwards is positive all right we define going downwards is positive so the forces acting on it is k x minus l over 2 theta going upwards so it is negative because we define going downwards is positive so negative k x minus l over 2 theta okay this one also going upwards so negative 2 k x plus l over 3 theta okay and then plus with ft y plus because ft is moving to the same direction as what we define to be positive so ft positive ft all right now solve this okay expand what do you need what you can expand in the bracket so you'll get negative kx positive l over 2k theta minus 2kx minus 2l over 3k theta okay this times this and lastly plus ft okay now what can you do after this is that you can further solve this okay there are actually a few stuff that you can solve so for example uh, negative kx and also negative 2kx you can solve this 
Okay, you can solve this and you'll get negative 3 kx. Alright. So next, for k theta also you can solve. So solve that, you get negative L over 6k theta. And lastly, you're left with Ft. Okay, bring everything to the left side equals to zero but now it is not equal to zero because you have force right the right side always the force okay if there's no force in in the system as what we did before uh it, it will be equals to will be equal to zero okay as what we've done in uh problem 5.8 yes if you see back the video for the problem 5.8 we're doing the same it's best it's basically more or less the same method Okay, uh, of we doing the FBD for problem 5.8, you can take a look at that back. There's no force in that question, but there is a force in this question. So it's not equal to zero as in 5.8. For this question, it will be equals to the force FT. So bring everything to the left side. So MX double dot plus 3KX plus L over 6K theta equals to F. Ft. Alright, so this is your free body diagram. Okay. Now, we're going to do the summation of moment. Also use the body. Okay. Uh, the body up here. To get the summation of moment. So summation of moment, as we all know, it equals to J naught theta double dot, right? Also, summation of moment equals to, which means J naught theta double dot equals to, uh, force times distance, right? Moment is equals to force times distance. Okay, depending on what the direct the direction of the force on the body itself, uh, is it going cl clockwise from the from the center or anti uh, or counterclockwise from the center? Because we define clockwise is positive now. So first of all. The force for the first spring, kx minus l over 2 theta. So this force over here is going upwards, right? So upwards from the pivot point or from the center it will be like this, right? Which means it goes clockwise. So this force here is positive for the moment. So force, the force is kx minus l over 2 theta. All right, times, this is the force, times distance from the center, L over, L over 2. All right, so times L over 2. Okay, next. For the second force, the force in the spring, in the second spring. So this force is going upwards, right? So going upwards from the center, it will be like this. Right, which means it goes counterclockwise. So it goes counterclockwise. So it will be negative because we define clockwise is positive. So negative the force 2kx plus L over 3 theta. That's the force times the distance. Force times distance. Moment. So the distance from the center is L over 3. Multiply again with L over 3. And lastly, don't forget about the force here. The external force is going downwards. So it will be clockwise, right? Clockwise direction from the center. So clockwise is positive. So positive Ft. Positive F, Ft. Force times distance. What is it? What is the distance from the force Ft to the center? Okay. L over 3. L over 3. Same distance with 2k from the center. Alright, we're done with that. So now let's expand what we can expand. Okay, so next. J naught theta double dot equals to... Okay, L... Over 2kx minus 
L square L over 2 times L over 2, right? So L square over 4 K theta minus 2 times L over 3 so you get 2 L over 3 Kx next 2 times L over 3 times L over 3 theta you'll get negative 2 L square over 9 K theta plus with L over 3 F over F D so next further solve this if you can simplify, you can simplify for kx and kx here. So you'll get g naught theta L double dot equals to L over 2 minus 2 L over 3. You get negative L over 6 kx. Next, you can solve for k theta. Negative L square over 4. Negative 2 L square over 9. And you'll get here, after you solve it using a calculator, you get negative 17 L square over 36 k theta lastly the force plus with l over 3 f d all right next so bring everything to the left side so you'll get your answer to be L over 6kx equals to L over 3fd. If no force on the right side is 0, there is a force, so leave the force on the right side. So this will be your second UM. Okay then, next. So, if you already got your, you already have your UMs, okay, so put it in matrix form because this is a sec, uh, two degree of freedom, okay, as what we told in your lecture, okay, if uh, it is two degree of freedom, better put it in uh, your UM in matrix. So, for your mass matrix, Okay, for your mass matrix, uh, the first line will be for x dot, x double dot, second, sorry, first column will be for x double dot, second column will be for theta double dot. Alright, I'm going to put it here, x double dot first, and then theta double, double dot. Okay, so M. 0, 0, G0. Alright. Remember, the first column is for X double dot. Second column is for theta double dot. First row is for first uh, equation. Second row is for second equation. Alright. So, uh, You've already learned this in the linear algebra class. Okay, so this is your mass matrix plus with your spring matrix. Okay, your spring matrix for x for, from the first equation, which you get for the first row. For x, you have 3k. For theta, you have L over 6k. Okay. For the second row, your x is L over 6k. And your theta is 17L square over 36k. Okay, so this is x and theta. Alright. From the first equation, from the second equation, 
this is for the x and this is for theta okay so equals to so both of your equations equals to the first uh, the first uh, equation is ft and the last equation is l over 3 ft so just put it over here so ft l over 3 ft okay so this is your matrix for equation of motion okay you've done it so let's take a look at what the question wants the second part of the two of the question so for e they want us to derive the equations of motion second they ask you what is the nature of coupling of the system okay so you can uh, once you've done the metric so you can take a look back at the lecture number 12 okay uh, for the model analysis uh, lecture lecture 12 stated here that the types of coupling could either be static or elastic coupling and the second coupling is dynamic coupling dynamic or inertial coupling so for 5.49 that we've done just now what is the coupling so the coupling is static or elastic static or elastic coupling you can say uh either one static or elastic the same thing all right why because we have non-diagonal stiffness matrix okay non-diagonal stiffness matrix so let's take a look at the matrix that we've done just now so this is the mass matrix so this is a stiffness matrix if you have a damper for this question you don't have c right you don't have damper so if you have damper then you're you you're gonna have another matrix over here which is only for the damper so the stiffness matrix which is a spring matrix here it is non-diagonal which means if it uh what does it mean by non-diagonal non-diagonal if diagonal you have your um matrix to be like this or like this diagonal you you only have numbers on the on the main diagonal row of your matrix and the other numbers uh, and the other number that is not at the main diagonal row is zero so this is diagonal matrix so for this question we found the matrix for the spring uh, like this this is diagonal the mass is that the mass matrix is diagonal right but the but the spring matrix is non-diagonal because other than the main diagonal row you have values right it is not zero you have values so this is non-diagonal stiffness matrix so since you can see this it is it, it is non-diagonal for the stiffness matrix so your answer will be static or elastic coupling so you can put it over here it's gonna do it yeah for b all right your answer will be static or elastic right yeah elastic coupling okay so that's how you do it for 5.49 using only free body diagram okay and summation of forces also summation of moment okay now we're gonna do the same question okay we've already answered for b so we're not gonna go, going to answer for b anymore but we are going to do the same question again but this time we're gonna use lagrange equation okay to get the eom okay like i've already told you at the earlier of this uh, video there's two way of finding the eom using fbd or lagrange so just now we only uh, we only use fbd now we are going to use lagrange method okay lagrange equation so so for lagrange equation 
this is the equation that I get or you also can get this from your from your sheet so from the, your formula sheet the, this is your Lagrange equation okay where your T is kind of thick your V your V is a uh, potential energy and your D is really dissipation so which is uh, basically damper okay the uh, if you have damper in your system so you'll have this equation but for 5.49 like we've done just now all right don't have any c don't have it any damper at all so there will be no d for this question so i'm just gonna put over here this is number one this is number two this is number three and this is number four so for number three we don't have that we don't have damper so let's take a look at that at the figure all right let's take a look at the figure so as we can see here the same question right uh so we know that the rigid bar is moving uh downwards for translational and also for just now clockwise right for rotational so we know that it have it is uh two degree of, it is two degree of freedom system so, so we straight away write it over here so for translation it is half mv squared right for kinetic uh, energy formula half mv squared so half m x dot square plus with half for rotational g naught theta dot square all right so what we what do we do next Whatever the question wants, okay, since we're going, going to use Lagrange, so first find this, all right, write it back, this one, the first one we are going to do for Q, this is Q, right, is for X, we are going to find X first. So first of all, differentiate your kinetic energy with respect to X dot, okay, with respect to X dot. So, if you differentiate this with respect to x dot, you'll get 0. If you differentiate this with respect to x dot, you'll get uh, differentiation. Uh, uh, power bring it to the front, power minus 1. So, you'll be left with mx dot. Right. Okay, and then differentiate this one more time. Okay, basically double differentiation. So, this is actually power 1, right? Power 1, bring it to the front. Power 1, minus 1. So, we get power 0. Okay, and then, remember chain rule. Once you differentiate, so this one will become 1 lah. Because one min uh, power 1 minus 1 equals 0. Anything with power 0 equals 1. So, you'll be left with M. Right. But remember, okay, chain rule. If you differentiate outside, you have to differentiate inside. Right, you have to differentiate inside. So differentiate x dot, you'll get x double dot. Alright, so now settle this. We're going to find the second one. Okay, the one that I label as number two. With respect to Q, which our Q now is x. So differentiate kinetic energy formula with respect to x. Okay, so we don't have x at all. So if we differentiate with respect to x, you'll get 0. Alright? Okay then. Next. Do the same for theta. Okay, now we define our Q as theta. So differentiate kinetic energy with respect to theta dot. Alright, sorry. This is supposed to be theta dot. With respect to theta dot. So, now, differentiate the kinetic energy with respect to theta dot. This one will be 0. And this one will be square, bring it to the front. Half times square, uh, half times 2 equals to 1. So, square power minus 1 equals to 1. So, you'll be left with J naught theta dot. And then further differentiate this. Differentiate this one more time. So, you'll get J naught theta double dot. Differentiate with respect to theta. You don't have theta here. So you get 0. Okay. 
settle for kinetic energy we don't we don't have damper so we, we move on to the to the fourth one which is potential energy so potential energy is only at springs okay it's only at springs so the springs uh, is k and also 2k okay i'm gonna bring back this thing here All right. So our springs are half. The first spring is k, right? This the first spring is k. The second spring is two k. So the first spring is half k, x square. All right. And the second spring half two k, x square. But remember. The relative displacement we've already found uh, from the previous uh, slide just now uh, we use fbd right and you still have to use fbd to find the relative displacement yeah so the relative displacement we've already get this which is x minus l over 2 theta square plus half 2k your x now is for 2k this relative displacement is x plus l over 3 theta square okay so once you get that okay we're going to do the same thing based on what lagrange equation wants Okay, it wants differentiate potential energy V with respect to Q. So first we do the Q for X and then the Q for theta. So this equation here differentiate with respect to X. So with respect to X, differentiate that. So first of all, uh, differentiate this. So your square, bring it to the front. Okay, square minus one. So you'll be left with, with k x minus l over two theta. Remember, chain rule. What uh, if you already differentiate outside? Okay, if you already differentiate outside, you get this right. Okay, times with uh, the differentiation, okay, with the differentiation inside the bracket. Okay, multiply with the differentiation inside the bracket. So, with respect to x, this one will be 0. Differentiate x, you'll get 1. So, multiply with 1. I know this is not important, but this will uh, get to you sometimes uh, when your x is negative. Okay, let's say, let's say, for example, this x is negative and you are differentiating uh, with respect to x. So, differentiate this, you'll get 0 because that's theta. Differentiate x, you'll get negative 1. Uh, so, if you don't do that, if you, do, uh, if you don't do differentiation using chain rule, so, you'll be missing the negative. Okay. And that will affect your answer later on. So, Going back, uh, getting back to the continue with the solution. So times with one, settle this. Okay. Now for this part of the equation, S differentiate square, blah, 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 bring it to the front. And then you get 2K X plus L over 3 theta. Okay. Remember chain rule. Differentiate also in times with the differentiation inside the bracket. Differentiate theta 0. Differentiate x equals to 1. Okay, so I get that. Alright. So next, settle this. Okay, settle this. So you'll get your answer to be 3kx plus l over 6k theta. 
okay 3 kx over x uh, over plus with l over 6 k theta all right so now for differentiate this again with respect to theta and also theta dot hey, sorry with respect to theta now only theta all right so with respect to theta, okay, so you'll get this. Okay, if you share outside, you get this. And then multiply with the differentiation of the inside. Okay, x will be zero because we are differentiating with respect to theta. So differentiate theta, you'll, you'll be left with negative L over 2. All right. Negative L over 2. Okay, plus with okay differentiate outside the uh, for this part of the equation you left 2k x plus l over 3 theta all right 2k x l plus l over 3 theta and then differentiate inside the bracket multiply with the differentiation inside the bracket chain rule x becomes zero differentiate theta you'll be left with positive l over 3 okay solve this and you'll get neck 17 over 36 sorry 17 l square over 36 k theta plus l over 6 k x okay then now number one plus number two we don't have number three plus number four equals to uh, if there is forces uh, q equals to q if there is force if no force then the q is zero so Number one, okay, number one, plus with number two, plus with number three. So you'll get MX double dot plus three KX plus L over 6K theta equals to, your force now is FD. Okay, so you get your first EOM. Okay. UM for translational. Settle for that. Next. Okay, do the same thing for theta. Uh, number one plus number two okay and then lastly plus number four all right so you'll get j naught theta double dot plus 17 l square over 36 k theta plus l over 6 k x equals to remember uh, J naught is moment, so equals to the force. Force also uh, needs to be in moment uh, in terms of moment. So force times distance, L over, L over three, okay. L over three F T. So that's okay. Depending on what you do, either you do F B D and use summation of forces and summation of moment. To get your EOM also can or use Langrange okay whichever that you find more e uh, whichever you find easier for you to do okay you can do both so this is how you do it as you can see the answer is the same all right for both all right that's how you do for 5.49 uh, using FBD uh, summation forces and summation moment or Lagrange equation. Thank you.